we're back on the American Dream Business Roundtable with Greg Noe, my co-host, and our guest, Tom Van Wert. And one of the things that we didn't talk about is promotion, right? Not yet. Well, that's one of the P's. Let's talk about promotion because I think that's really important to promote your product. Well, of course it is. Uh, you have to let people know what you have, and there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, I kind of like to divide the uh, promotional world into two types, okay. traditional and digital. And most people know what traditional is, TV, radio, newspaper. Um, some the TV and radio are, are good, uh, a little more expensive, but you get great coverage. That's true. Um, newspapers are kind of dying these days. Everybody knows that. Then you get into digital, and digital is a, a new world, and a lot of things, people don't understand when you say digital, what, what is all included. It's, uh, it's internet advertising, it's pay-per-click, it's uh, SEO, search engine optimization, mm -hmm. there's email campaigns, uh, text messages, and, and who knows what else is going to come. Social media. No, social media, of course, yes. You know, Facebook, LinkedIn, <coughs> Twitter, all those kinds Tumblr, of things. Tumblr, I mean, there's so Tumblr, many. Tumblr, yes. That's right. There's so many of them, it's hard to keep up. And the other thing that just happened today is a radio station, one of them, went to a new app on Apple, which is another digital format, correct? Right, right. Yeah. Well, uh, I'd like to get back, uh, talk about price a little bit more. Uh, price is one of the five P's, obviously, and uh, it includes everything uh, in the price. Uh, well, there's different things that have to be considered. Are you going to charge a high price and then discount? Is price a major part of your business? Are you a discount business? For example, do you have, is your cheap in your name or discount or uh, those kinds of things? Um, how are you going to package a bunch of your items together so that people can get a bundled price? Um, are you going to a la carte certain prices and, and uh, add, have add-ons, for example? Sell one basic item and then what I like to refer to as nickel and dime them uh, <laughs> <laughs> for all these other things that they may want that go with. And so you, we have to consider that. What is our model? Are we going to start our business with high prices and then lower them later on? Uh, or a better strategy might be to start with low prices and then increase them. I had a client who was starting a coffee shop and uh, my uh, recommendation for them, they were selling sandwiches and things as well. Uh, they uh, served breakfast and lunch. And I said, Lobo, your, your, you know, just cover your costs on your sandwiches. And as the people come and get to know you, uh, because you only get one opportunity to make a good first impression, then later on, after they're loyal to you, they expect over time to have the prices go up a little bit. It's better than starting at a high price and not getting anybody to come back because they perceive you to be too pricey. So there's strategies is what I'm getting at. There's philosophies, if you will, that you, you need to think about before you just jump in there and use cost plus. You know, this is what it cost me to produce my product or service, and I'm going to add on 10 or 20 percent. And, and to that, I'd like to add another, another comment. There's a process that uh, I've always used called market back pricing. <coughs> Pardon me. And market back pricing is a little different. You start at the price you're going to sell for and you go backwards. So cost plus is you start with what it's going to cost you and you add to it. But what's important about market back pricing is that you have to look at what the market will bear for That's your product. True. That's you true. have to look at what the competition is. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because I'm old enough to remember when the calculator was invented uh, back in 1972, and it was sold for $300 wow. uh, by HP. And they knew at the time that the components to that cost $250. But what some other company did is they worked the problem backwards. They said, if we had a $10 calculator, how many would we sell? And of course, at that time, zillions. If you had a $10 calculator compared to this $300 thing, you'll sell zillions of them. Well, now, if we sell zillions of them, how much would the component cost be? Well, they're only going to be nickels and dimes. So I, I like to think of the board of directors at HP looking at that other company who, according to HP, their, their costs were $250 each. 
whereas Texas Instruments, that's how they got their start, looked at a totally different approach. So sometimes you, you can think out of the box and come up with a totally different pricing strategy, and that's why it's so important. I want to ask him one question, that is, don't you think focus groups are important, especially with uh, a company that's bringing a new product into market? And one of the things that I asked him, uh, the speedy chicken trust man, was mm. that how expensive was the product? How much did it cost to make him to make the product? And did he, you know, factor in the other thing of if he wanted to sell it to a retailer, what he was going to have to pay in an upcharge to that retailer? Are those important? Well, of course they are. You mentioned focus groups, and focus groups is a very common form of market research, and it's important because you get what what's known as qualitative research. And that's where people, you, you get their opinions. And the people in the focus group generally represent um, segments in your market. Um, you then take the qualitative and you go out and you test each of the different concepts that you discovered in the focus group. But um, back to what you were asking there, the, um, the, the thing that's important is that he needs to look at not just um, what his costs are, but what are the other solutions to the same, for the same product. How is it being done now? And is he, does, does he have a better price, an equal price, or maybe he can get more for it if he's providing more value? Well, and a uh, tie into that is uh, the notion that about half of the product's cost is in marketing because people forget that uh, you have to bring your product to the marketplace. And so I'm going to bring in another P, which is location uh, or place. Uh, are you selling your uh, product at the right places? And that obviously could mean the right outlets, but it could also mean um, are you selling it on the internet or a retail store? Uh, and they're all together. All of these things interrelate. You know, uh, you can only buy beer, for example, at certain vendors at a, at a stadium. So they're able to jack up the price because you know there aren't any other uh, vendors around. Right. So this it shows you how they're interrelated. Um, and so with so many of these costs related to place, uh, that has something to do with the price. It has something to do with the promotion, and uh, and so we need to think about the whole uh, issue of place and uh, how that affects all of the other P's. And I ask him to sit and think about exactly, you know, all those different things that we are discussing tonight. And I introduced him to someone that can actually do the carding for him, for <clears throat> his product, right. and doing it in such a way that he can still put it in, if he wants to mail it, into an envelope that will keep his cost of mailing down because you have to think about that well, as well, correct? And, that, and we're seeing a major shift in how everything is sold now. Right. Uh, they don't distribute the products to the, the outlet stores the same way they used to. And then you would go to an outlet store and buy it, pick it up there. You might go there and look at the product, but then you go online and order it, and it, it's, uh, you know, it comes via the delivery truck oftentimes or FedEx or something like that. So we're, right now we're in the midst of a major shift in how products are sold. And one Let's of the, talk oh, about pardon. that. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's talk about that, if you don't mind, in the next segment because we're running out of time in this All segment. Right. And uh, is that what you want to talk about, Tom? Um, well, I was just going to mention real quick that uh, when it comes to place, you want to have your product for sale where the customer wants to buy it where they normally would go to buy it, you want to be there. Right. right. Or if he decides that he wants to out sell it outwards to someone, like a chicken company or something sure. like that, that it would work with, that another might strategy. be the way to go, another strategy to go. So what are we going to talk about in the next segment? Positioning. Positioning. Right. Okay, and we'll be right back, right after these messages, with the American Dream Business Roundtable with Greg Noe of the... At your Allen Group. And Tom Van Wert. Of Digital Vision Marketing. And would you give those websites, please? Yes, uh, edgarallengroup.com, which is E-D-G-A-R-A-L-L-E-N, group, G-R-O-U-P.com. 
Digital Vision Marketing is dvmohio.com, DVM for Digital Vision Marketing. And we'll be right back on the American Dream Business Roundtable. <music>